My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Last week we finished making most of the deck structure so this week we're hoping to bed it and fasten it down but before we do that we've got a big timber delivery coming here very soon with the planking stock so we've got to clear some space for it uh, by doing some gardening shipwright style. Jacob, what are we doing here? Pulling out the bamboo or whatever this is. Making space. Why are we making space? The planking stock is coming tomorrow or Thursday or whatever. <laughs> So we've cleared out a nice big space for stacking timber here now and since we've done this we actually went down to the kiln in Port Townsend where my planking stock was very gently drying out and we unloaded it all from the kiln and stacked it on the road there outside Edensaw, the timber supplier and they're going to bring it up here so we can stack it here ready to be cut into planks and fastened to the boat when the time comes. So the Wana arrived of course and we got it out of the truck pretty easily in the end and I decided that because it's still going to be uh, a few more weeks before we were able to start planking I wanted to set up an air drying system to keep the airflow uh, moving through the timber. The drying we did in the kiln was extremely gentle because um, I really didn't want to dry the wood out too fast and have it check and split and I also didn't want to cook it too much and damage the structural properties of it so we took it really slowly and gentle and we didn't take it down to a really really dry moisture content. We left it just a little bit wet um, but hopefully what this is going to do is going to keep on air drying it and it's just going to keep gently reducing the moisture content a little bit more. It's very simple, the fans just blow the air out and the tarp stops the air from coming in between the stacks at the top but the tarp is open at the back so it pulls air in from behind, all the air goes through all the stacks hopefully and then it's blown up the front so there's a continual rotation of air there and as that dry air goes in it picks up a little bit of moisture as it goes past the surface of the timber and it comes out leaving the wood slightly drier and that's just a continuous circulation there of fresh dry air going in, very slightly more moist air coming out. Alright, well I was hoping we would be fastening the deck structure down now, but unfortunately we have a bit of a problem. After discovering the bacterial wetwood last week, we inspected all the timber that we'd used much more closely, and although we didn't find any more of that bacterial infection, what we did find was that one of the logs which we've used has a grain 
which we're not happy with. Um, it doesn't look like white oak should look like, and we've basically been trying to figure out what it is uh, and if it's suitable for what we're doing. So oak, in general, has small pores in between its growth rings. These run up and down the tree and they suck nutrients and so on up. In white oak, those pores are generally blocked off, um, so things can't pass freely through them. Uh, but in this piece, which came from the log in question, the pores are open, so they're like straws and they run all the way down the timber, um, so you can actually blow air through them. And what that means is that they will suck up water as well, uh, which is very bad news for a boat because if you get a little bit of fresh water getting in onto the piece of timber, uh, instead of running off it or drying off eventually, or in the worst case, getting a small area of rot, what will happen is that water will wick up into the timber, it'll travel the whole length, and eventually that'll probably create a lot of rot in the whole piece. Now, generally red oak has open pores uh, like that, and Louis from Tips from a Shipwright did a really good video about identifying red oak and the reasons uh, why you'd want to identify it. Now I've been doing quite a lot of research, a bit of testing and a few boat builders have a look at this stuff and I've not got a clear answer on what it is yet so I'm still researching and trying to figure out um, if we should put it into the boat, if we should replace it but the trouble is we made I think 18 of these half beams out of this particular log and uh, one full beam as well so to remake them all is a lot of work. So morale is a bit low here right now, we're just trying to figure out what to do, uh, but I'm really glad that there's another ship right here because Pete has been able to uh, start working on making the stringers while I keep on testing this stuff and making phone calls and trying to figure out what to do. Well, it's been a bit of a funny week so far. Um, not only have we all been a little bit downhearted about the oak situation, um, but also Cheka had to leave, unfortunately. She just had to go back to the UK for a bit. So it's been a slow start, what with moving all the planking stock around and me spending a day going to the airport and uh, trying to figure out what to do about this oak. But having done the brake testing on the oak, um, it was clear really what the decision needed to be and so you know I've decided now that the best thing to do is to replace all that and I already feel a lot better uh, just having made that decision. I actually talked to Duke who I bought the timber off. Um, he's pretty sure that it is white oak uh, and I'm sure he's right because he really does know his stuff. He thinks it might be some kind of uh, cross hybrid. Um, he agrees that it shouldn't be porous like that so I'm going to send him a sample. Uh, we're going to find out exactly what it is but he's very generously uh, offered me a refund for that log which is great. In the meantime Pete's been making great progress with the build stringer. The build stringer runs fore and aft along the frames on the inside about halfway up. They're made from Angelique and they add a lot of strength to the hull particularly in the area where the hull would lay if the boat is dried out on the tide for example and she lays on her side. Uh, that's the area which would take a lot of the weight and so it adds more strength there. So at least I know where I stand now with the oak. Things are looking up and tomorrow morning I'm going to get on with replacing those half beams. Do you want to start putting these beams out? Yeah. I'll label them. Okay.
<laughs> so I suppose what I'm doing is preparing for the build stringer to go in by making sure that the frames all line up in a fair curve along the middle here. And I'm doing that by by carving out where the high spots are and then stringing the batten across here to double check for fair and getting a nice firm batten along and making sure that I got all the gaps. Super flesh, super flesh. Is that fun, Joe? So much fun. Yeah? Everything's fun here. Shavings. The dog's life, huh? What are you doing, Pete? I'm uh, remaking half beams. We got a funny flitch. We figured out some things last week. We thought maybe we had some red oak, and then it turned out it's all white oak, but some of it's not the best quality white oak, and we still had some leftover nice white oak, and we're remaking the half beams with some really nice white oak. It's like uh, a restoration project, huh? We're restoring a rest. We're double restoration. Whoa! Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. How do you, um, how do you feel about we're that? We're actually, I'm pretty bummed about it. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, we kind of spent last week going back and forth, uh, whether or not we should. This oak was snapping kind of like a carrot, which you don't really want. That's that's no good. And it was wicking up water. Uh, it'll suck water right up the end grain, uh, which you also don't really want. Um, so we have some better stuff and we'll use that. Um, it like, makes a lot more sense. Fun boat stuff we're learning here. Is that, is that I learn something new every day, Patrick. There you go. 
You see, the, the front of the boat is called the front. <laughs> and this side, this is this is the right side of the boat. You get you get into the boat by opening the, the doors, <laughs> and the sails go up by a series of ropes. Oh. <laughs> That's something I learned from. Uh, well, what are you sleeping? You sleep in the bedroom, <laughs> and you and you take a you take a crap in the toilet, <laughs> in the bathroom, don't you? Well, you've learned so much while you've been here. Yeah, yeah. You've now qualified from Leo's dodgy boat school. Took me two months, but uh, yeah, learned a lot, you know? Right, well we finally got the deck structure back together again now. All the new half beams have been fitted and now I know that the entire deck structure is really good quality, uh, strong, rot resistant white oak. So um, it actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, it just took a few days um, and we're back to where we were. So we can now move forward and forget about it. Lesson learned this week is to inspect timber more thoroughly before using it, even if you think you know what it is. Right, so here we have the four parts of the two bilge stringers and today we're going to try and get these into the boat. We can't go over the top because of the deck beams and more importantly the cross pulls which are in the way and there's not enough room to go through the frames so we're going to have to take them way aft and push them in through the transom or where the transom would be. Once they're inside the boat we will bolt them together, we'll bend and edge set them into place and then we'll cut the joints on the board ends where they meet the stem. I mean, I've got the weight here. Right. So. Is it just holding itself? Are you holding any weight? No. It's just holding itself. 
Damn. <laughs> That's gnarly. Right. It's pretty stiff. It's pretty stiff. <laughs> A little bit edge setting that. Sure we can. Not yet. But that would be. That's pretty much where you want it, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Is that high up enough in the front? Yeah. In the, in the sorry, forward. So we've got the port side stringer roughly in the place where we want it. I'm just taking the bevels from the front of the stringer where it's going to meet the stem so we can take it out again and cut that joint so it'll fit up nicely in there, nice and tight. So far getting in has been not too difficult. It's uh, an easier curve than the beam shelf, I think, but we haven't got the twist into it yet and the edge set, so there's still quite a bit of work to do and that last bit might be quite hard. Okay, all right, and ready? And actually, you should be able to stand up. Let it, like Let it go, Yeah, so this is the end of the eighth week that I've been here. I have to go back to Santa Fe. I'm actually building my own design studio and I'm also helping open uh, the Clay Center of Santa Fe. Once the pandemic kind of calms down, I'll be teaching classes in pottery and sculpture. Come on down. <laughs> That's a really low key plug right yeah. there, isn't it? Do, do, do Tally Ho viewers get a discount? Tally Ho viewers? That depends on if they've answered all the quiz questions correctly, uh, like offset hatch and all that stuff. Maybe. Hey, I actually forgot about that. Can you can you tell us why the hatch opening is offset? Well, the eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed that the forward hatch had a little skylight on the right-hand side. For that reason, the the actual companionway was offset about six inches to the left. So we had to set the, the actual carlins on the hatch three inches to the right to center the actual companionway. The actual sliding companionway is going to be on the center line, right? Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, it would have been too far to the left and the boat would have tipped over. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> balance is, is actually more important than, than you think when you're at sea because it's not like you have wheels on the car, you know. Actually, there aren't going to be any wheels on this. Is that right? Yeah, no, no wheels at all. I thought, you know, I was shocked when I came by. There's no axles or anything. It's weird. So the build stringers are in. It took quite a bit of effort and a lot of clamping and banging, uh, but they're into position. We had to edge set them quite a bit to get them exactly where we wanted, but it's a lot quicker doing this uh, with a few pairs of hands. And in fact, after we got the first one in, the guys were able to get the second one in while I was editing this video. The next step will be to fasten these to the frames and then we'll be able to go back to the deck structure and get that all finished off. That's all we've got time for right now though, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference and it means that I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Yeah.